you'll see someone's Twitter account and they'll post something crazy and then you click on it and they have like five followers. They tweet two times a day and get zero interaction on every tweet. And I'm like, why are you, why are you posting this? You're not getting anything out. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a fire alarm test. One second. Okay, I think it's over. <laughs> I don't know. I got, my, I got my mouse over the mute button. I guess I just, I don't get it. Uh, like, if you post, like, five times in 2012, get no interaction, and then you're like, I'm just going to live my life. I'm like, that's, that's normal. But people who post on... There, there, it, it does feel like there's something missing here. Anyway, you're the asshole and so is your wife. You're in their home. I will say, by the way, people might think that this is like rude to call the husband the asshole, but he is the asshole. Like he's, the, he's society's first line of defense against his wife. I know how that sounds, but at the same time, like he's got... <laughs> and it works both ways. My wife is society's first line of defense against me. When I get annoyed by something and I'm like, you know what, I'm never going to go back to that store ever again. She's like, why are you acting like a weirdo? And I'm like, I don't know, good point. And then I like chill out a little bit. So you, gotta, you have an obligation to yourselves and each other, but also the world. 16-year-old child. It's better than getting like a, you know, a $50 Amazon gift card or something like that. I it should have like it doesn't need to be transactional. The transaction is already like implied. This is one of the most bizarre posts I've ever seen. I'm not gonna call anyone an asshole because I think you're in the wrong subreddit, buddy. You are in the wrong subreddit. I think a lot of this comes down to gory details about time frames and who directly asked what of whom. But this is an extremely strange thing to litigate this hard. Who expects a family member to pay them for a birthday cake on their birthday? Who wages a proxy war about it on behalf of someone who apparently doesn't want payment enough to advocate for it themselves? And then returns a president as revenge instead of just reminding him, but also who puts their wife on blast to the entire family over a birthday present? I diagnose you all with weird and petty disease. Your sentence is to drink a glass of water and count to ten. Okay, honestly... The, the rare Reddit post that I'm like, that's actually pretty funny in my opinion. I, I can see myself saying that. It just doesn't seem like they should have, uh, it shouldn't blow up in their face this much. Hold on, I'm, I'm finding the comment. Info, have you talked to your daughter? Did she want to be paid? Yes, of course she did. She He's in the background? Well, yeah, but he's in the video. I don't understand the problem. People need to get over being recorded? I don't know. I mean, like, I get that it's getting worse, but I don't necessarily think it should be normalized that, like... I mean, my... Personally... I don't really... Well, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where to approach this one from. I don't think you should have an expectation that you're not going to be filmed. Like, I, I think you should be on acceptable behavior pretty much anywhere, just in principle. Like, not just because you think you might be being recorded, but at the same time, like, it is annoying. Like, sometimes, it might be, maybe it's a generational thing, but, like, you ever go out to karaoke, and then, like, you start singing a song at karaoke, and somebody pulls out their phone and starts filming it? You're like, well, if it's my wife, I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. But if it's just like a friend that's at karaoke, I'm like, yo, can you put your phone away? Like, I'm, I thought we were all having like a, just a night out here where we could like have some fun and we could keep this stuff like in memory. We don't necessarily need to be like, oh, film this. Look, I'm at karaoke posted to like my seven Instagram followers so that like two of them can click the heart button and be like so fun. Like, I don't understand. Like, I think you could, if you're at karaoke and you film yourself dancing or someone films you dancing or something like that, and then you post it on your Instagram, that's not a big deal. 
But like as soon as you start catching random people that might not want that stuff to be posted, I find that, uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying that, I mean, here's what I think the situation should do. Right, here's what I think the situation should be. I think you should be able to post it without asking permission from everybody in the venue. But I do think if somebody happened to be recorded in the video is like, oh, I don't want that to be posted on social media, you should be like, understandable, I'll take it down and edit it. That seems like the way, that, the normal loop of behavior. Every wedding is filmed? Yeah, but like most, you know, or again, maybe it's generational, but like, weddings were filmed. She comes home from her dad's and has a phone with her and not just a cheap phone. I don't know much about phones, but it looked expensive. I was furious, so I took her phone away and told her she's not getting it back till she turns 12. She started to cry and called her dad. Wait a second, the plot thickens. How did she call her dad? I'm not, I'm going to assume that maybe they have a cordless still. Maybe they have one of those like, hey, if you pay for the internet, we'll give you the home phone for free or something like that. Maybe they, maybe they got Microsoft Teams. I don't know. I told him he had no right to buy that for her. She should have gotten a cheap phone at her 12th birthday like the rest of her siblings. This is just like, I mean, I know that this one says asshole. I feel like you can't take your kids. Okay, let's see. Let's, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. We were deciding what to eat, and she really wanted to go to this restaurant. I was on board with it, but I'm super picky. I had no idea what this restaurant had. We get there. I look at the menu. Nothing looks even semi-good. For example, all of the sandwiches had wheat bread, and I hate wheat. Oh, you hate wheat, but you love bread? Make it make sense. Just Impression-1843. Dash Make it make sense. I only eat flour that's been bleached before it's been pounded into a dough and baked. Anyway, I let her order her food, and when the lady asked what I want, I told her I wasn't eating. I told my girlfriend I wanted her to enjoy the meal, and I was happy to be there. No, listen, okay, this is like way too close to the bone. You know how, like, there's some crazy men online that are like, I never lose an argument with my girlfriend because if I did, she would lose respect for me? Those people are insane. But there is a little voice in my head that's like, if you don't get over your aversion to whole wheat bread as somebody that eats white bread, she's going to lose respect for you. It's not about being, like, an alpha male. It's just about, like, not being, like, like a little kid with no... I, I don't... I'm just, if you have a, a, a narrow palate, but it's not crazy, like, that's one thing. But, like, to be, like, ooh, whole wheat bread on my sandwich, like, we, we gotta, you gotta nut up a little bit, I think. Have a nice uh, dining experience with your, with your partner, and then when you go home and she's like, I gotta go to the bathroom real quick, you open up your fridge and you know shove like four cheese strings in your mouth or something like that anyway so i just learned that all bread is made of wheat which is not technically true but i i understand your point it was some type of whole grain or sourdough what i meant to say is i only like white bread but brioche buns are good too see he, he's not that picky of an eater he likes both white bread and brioche so white bread and white bread plus um like triple the eggs and butter in the recipe. Don't say he doesn't have exotic tastes. Update, 10 months into the relationship and we never went to a place where I couldn't find something to eat. This was the first time that it happened. Also, I do try new things. I'm not stubborn with it, but... I'm on your side. I'm not looking for stuff to get mad at. I want to preface this with this. I'm on your side. You are stubborn if you won't eat a whole grain bread or a sourdough bread sandwich. It's not like they're asking you to eat like, like a whole oyster. If someone's like, I don't want to eat an oyster, I get it. 
you're eating a whole slimy, salty, kind of like weirdly metallic tasting organism. But if you're like, I want a ham sandwich on white bread, and they're like, we only have whole grain, and you're like, mm, that's too much for me, then you are being stubborn. You're not, that's not a reasonable refusal to have the high ground, to be in the right in this situation. Now, if he said no to Italian herbs and cheese, we would lock him up. We'd put him in prison. Also, I do try new things. I'm not stubborn with it, but usually it's me trying her food because I only order things I know I'll like. I don't like wasting food nor my money. I Listen, I know how this sounds, okay? And if you're a picky eater, you're not going to want to hear this. And maybe I'm, maybe this is a straw man. Maybe I'm making it up. You might be like a good partner, but I feel like there is a chance that she's just going to leave you for the convenience of being able to eat at a normal restaurant with a, another person. Like, you, it just, it sounds like this is, you, you, you ever see the tweet that's like, being in a relationship is just asking the other person what you want to eat for dinner every day before you die? Like, there's some truth to that. Like, food is, it's a ritual that you do every day. Or, or at least one has dietary restrictions because of medical issues, religion, or their vegetarian, vegan restrictions like this are easy to understand, and there's reasoning behind it. Someone just wanting nuggies and hating on wheat bread is a nightmare. Go try something new. This is not what I said. I said, you're welcome to be a picky eater. Just don't be surprised when your girlfriend leaves you for someone who isn't afraid of Dijon mustard. That's what I, what I said was way more offensive. Plus, they're not just into chicken nuggets. That's intellectually dishonest. They like both white bread and brioche bread. Brioche, it's a French word. It's continental cuisine. You're the asshole. Seems like being treated like a child when she is a child. My sister sang on Tuesday when she was in a practice room. Anna went around and told everyone to clap for her no matter how she does and to only give nice comments because she's terrified. Then my sister sang and she sucked. She was looking down the whole time and had her arms around her chest. They had to restart the song twice for her. She was ahead of the music and didn't get half the notes right. Everyone clapped for her except for me. Why? Why, why do this to yourself? It's a self-inflicted wound. It's like Matthew Perry saying, how come River Phoenix is dead but Keanu Reeves is still alive. When Keanu Reeves was just living his life. Like, you just have no reason to create this problem for yourselves. You could have just gone, you should have just clapped, great job, gone home, watched Netflix, make a post like this we've read, and it's always a little spicy. I love, dude, the, the similar to this post always makes me laugh. Like, I, I, I got to figure out, I've got to reverse engineer how the number one most similar post to this one is r slash Volkswagen Golf GTI just hit 200,000 miles. <laughs> like, where is that? Maybe he bought his, one of his kids, like, a, a car and not the other one. Congratulations to you, though. No disrespect. <clears throat> that is kind of sick, though. From two years ago. <laughs> From, dude... February 25th, 2020. Holy cow. They didn't know. Have you seen the, the... Between myself and my wife. I would love to help Heather, but honestly, we're in different financial circumstances now than we were before. We're hoping to retire soon and do not have a lot of excess money. My wife thinks that Heather does not ask for much, and we've clearly helped one child significantly more than the other. Ava's wedding cost... Ten, tens of thousands of dollars and the house was obviously hundreds of thousands she thinks she we should sacrifice whatever we can to help heather to be clear we have the fin we have financially helped heather over the years helped her with decorations when she's moved decorations like like furniture, okay.
They get expectations. If they refuse to sell the land, they would be assholes who... You know what drives me... I'm just giving you a squirt. Psst. You know what drives me crazy? In the post... And maybe it's two different people. Chat's not a monolith, okay? Or two different groups of people. You know what drives me crazy? In the post where the lady filmed the dude at a wedding and he was dancing drunk and he said delete it. So many people were like, she has no legal right to... Uh, no legal... He has no legal right to demand that she take it down. She would be well within her legal rights to leave it up. And then here... People, I don't know if it's the same people, but in my head it's the same people because I feel like that's how the human brain works because I'm getting it from the same source. People are like, well, they have no legal right to sell the land. They shouldn't be forced to sell the land, but yet at the same time, if they don't do it, they're the assholes. Make up your fucking, make up your fucking mind, okay? Make up your fucking mind. It's not about, is this legal, is this illegal? You know, you know what else is driving me crazy? People are like, you wouldn't know what it's like because you don't have a sibling, okay? You, th maybe you're too fucking biased because you do have a sibling. Maybe you need an only child to look at this situation and tell you, actually, like, younger kids being a little bit of a baby. Like, grow up. Maybe you need the clarity that comes from with an only child, okay? Also, get a personality. You wouldn't understand. Say one of them is Channing Tatum in 21 Jump Street and the other one is uh, Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street. So one of them's uh, dumb as a bag of hammers and then the other one's pretty smart, okay? So they're both going to go to college. They pay for Channing Tatum's college, okay? Because he's not getting any scholarships on Celeste's for soccer. But Jonah Hill did so well in high school, he's got a full ride. Are the parents the assholes if they don't give the cash value of what they spent on Channing Tatum's education to Jonah Hill as a gift? There's so many yeses. And I'm like, I'm, I don't know, man. I'm in like the no camp. I mean, they, they worked for the money. thousand dollars for free they're not giving him a hundred thousand dollars they're giving an american college a hundred thousand dollars if they gave him a hundred thousand dollars and then said please give this to the university you'd never see the money again also i think if you were like oh i worked so hard and all i got was a free ride to a good school what a waste of my time. Maybe you're not as smart as you think you are. Maybe you shouldn't insert yourself into this metaphor because I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Jonah Hill. He was valedictorian. I'm glad I clicked on this one. I said these are always spicy. Lower middle class. Carmen is a single mom of two and works as a nurse. Michael and his wife are teachers and expecting their first child. Carmen makes $100,000. Michael and his wife make a little over $100,000 combined and live in California near the Bay Area where $100,000 is considered low income. Okay, fair enough. Eliza is a nanny for an extremely rich family. I don't know if she's considered living because she lives in a separate house but it's on the same property. She makes $250,000 a year plus bonuses, doesn't pay rent or utilities, rarely buys groceries because she always eats with the family. They bought her a brand new car. They pay for her gas maintenance, all of her medical, dental, vision. At first I was like, it sounds like she's a servant. Then I was like, what the hell? I got to go to nanny school, man. This is crazy. It's like... There's no, the salary is great, but then the bennies are like, you literally have to pay for nothing. Hell, they even pay for her gym membership and her vacations. What does she, what does she spend money on? That's all of the things that you buy. Her savings account is going out of control, man. This is, this is crazy. She's worked for them for two years. Two years! That, I thought that shit would be like 15 years of benefits cumulatively. She's been there since 2020. 
and recently bought a rental building in cash. Needless to say, she's doing very well for herself. And she bought the building in cash. No 7% mortgage. Holy cow. She's a landlord? Yeah, but she's girl bossing. So it's okay. Not okay? I think it's... I'm willing... I, listen, she's not really a landlord. First off, she's a landlady. I think that makes it better. Secondly, if she is a landlord, one rental building... Maybe she's like a land earl. On the, on the scale of lordship, she's not like a, a land emperor. You know, she's not like Li ka Shing or something like that. She's just... She's like a little earl or like a... Like a petty duke or something like that. It's not that bad. It starts with one building. You don't know why. Anyway, sorry. Be a kick-ass duke or something. Michael and Andrew just asked me for money. Michael needs 30k for part of it. I don't understand why she should feel compelled to make sure that all of her siblings are made equal. Being a leech to a one percenter isn't a job? No, it's a damn dream. It's like heaven. That's the streamer like retirement plan. Get one fan who is like the son of the CEO of like some kind of oil company and then just like ride off into the sunset. Why doesn't she share the dream a little bit? Like, honestly, like, I mean, I'm, we're all projecting here. I feel like it's kind of, I mean, like if your sister won like a real lottery, if she won $50 million in the Powerball or whatever, I would be like, buy me a house. I wouldn't ask for the down payment. I would ask for the whole thing in cash. I would expect, and, and listen, maybe I don't get a house. I'll live with it. Like, I'm not going to not going to blow everything up just if I don't get it. But like, if you won $50 million and if, if one of my very, very close, like if my mom, my dad, my wife or my daughter or a sibling, hypothetically won $50 million in the lottery, I would say, buy me a house. I would, I would drop. I'm trying to think here. Well, now it's like, am I the asshole? I won $50 million in the lottery and I bought a house for all of my friends who don't have houses. But now my friends who bought houses think that they're being punished by not getting a free house. Oh, if I'd known you were going to win the lottery and give everyone a free house, I wouldn't have paid for my house. You dickhead. Can you just give me the cash value of a house instead? You've made seven other people's lives better and yet you haven't made my life better. You're a bad person. Unironically, yes, give him the cash. You're an insane person. Listen, that was too far in Minecraft. I don't think adults should think like that. But you got your house. You're okay. You got a roof over your head. You're handling your bills. Why is if somebody else is struggling and they get like a handout, why should you get it? Why should you stick your hand out as well? Maybe I buy you like a car or something. Buy you like like your favorite car, like a Dodge Charger or something like that. Just take a look at them. Oh, I have to make them in the holding station. I'm going to put biscuits here. And then we're going to wait for them to cook. See you later. I'm going to go masturbate. Okay, have a nice one. Thanks for stopping by. In the future, you don't need to say what you're going to do. You can just go. And that's, like, I'm not mad about it. I'm just saying, in case you were unaware of that, in the future, that's something that you can do. <laughs> it's nice of them to be sincere, though. Listen, I can handle 
one breakfast sandwich on the menu, and then easy foods. Like, just, just toss me some one-star foods. We don't even need to practice those. And I'm ready. I'm ready. <clears throat> yeah, at least you left. Most people don't give me that courtesy. I, I need to start. Can I tell you that I got to... People make me part of their lives when I don't... I actively... It's not that I didn't ask for it. It's that I don't want to be. Someone tweeted me, and you might be in the chat right now, and you're probably going to laugh that you hear it. I hope you're not upset. They said, throw, they tweeted, throw back to this insane moment featuring NL. And it was a, a screenshot of their text messages with their partner that said, and I, this is paraphrasing, but I promise you this was the gist. Hey, I can't watch the video of you giving me a blowjob because I can hear NL in the background. And then the reply from their partner was like, all caps, LAMAL. You don't need to tweet me that. I'm not like disgusted. I'm just like, why am I seeing it? Like, I don't need to, that can be your own moment between the two of you. Doesn't have to be like, I, I don't need to be looped in. Like, I, I, you, maybe in your head, you're like, oh man, if I ever saw NL in person, I would tell him about this story. Please don't. Just say... I like your content. And then he's like, oh, that's um, mustard. And they're like, what are you talking about? Or they eat like chicken. And he's like, that's a uh, herring. You, I get the idea that you want your chef to know like what they're cooking, but they're smoking like 10 packs of cigarettes a day just to deal with the stress of the, of the kitchen rush. Like, are we expecting them to know what every food tastes like? I feel like you could be a good chef without necessarily knowing what every food tastes like. It doesn't seem like you have to be a great taster to be a, a great cook necessarily, but maybe I'm wrong. Because like, you ever see on Hell's Kitchen, the reality show, they'll make chefs like emulsions of stuff and then be like, eat this, what is it? And they get it wrong like 90% of the time. And you're like, how could a chef get it wrong? Well, like, the real question is, why do you think that you would know it 100% when someone who works with food doesn't? They're an accomplished chef. They're always like, my name's uh, Sarah. I own seven restaurants. Okay, clear me, clear me. What do we need on this one? Let me get those pies this time. Let's not make the same mistake. That was a, that was a gimme. I didn't even think about that one. My brain did that one for me. Hey, when it's hard, that's when you're learning the most. Look at that. That's when you're pushing yourself to your limit. That's when you make the most progress. I'm exactly like Chef Roy Choi and Hollywood director John Favreau right now. I would like to think that if we met, we would be best friends. Even though we've... PCIAL. PCIL. PCI. Okay, I can do this. I can definitely do this. Broccoli and a pad thai, a little strange, though. JRH, NBR. Get out of here with that, okay? And then we should get something a little easier. Even though two stars is not that bad. I kind of like the Lao Lao. Is, that, is, is it a food based on the, um, the Ashley Simpson song? You make me want to Lao Lao on the kitchen, on the floor. I'll be your French maid when you meet me at the door. I'm like an alley cat. You know what I'm talking about? You make me want to Lao Lao. <laughs> you don't know this one? I'm not making deluxe nachos right now. Ratatouille's fun to make. It's just a lot of 